Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you another tip for building microservices in Go, specifically how to test REST APIs. So this is the second part of five in a series where I will be covering REST APIs. Specifically in this video, we are going to be discussing how to implement tests using the net HTTP HTTP test package. There is another one called API test which also covers a few different ways to test HTTP based HTTP handlers. Um, so, I mean, if you want to check it out, I will leave the link in the description so you can you can uh, experiment with it. Uh, like I said, specifically this time, we're going to be using HTTP test. So let's jump into the code. The link to this repo and the link to the specific commit will be in the description as well. So if you remember the last time we were testing, we were working on task, the task.go file, which consists of the three different endpoints used for implementing the HTTP API for creating, updating, and getting tasks. All right, so the way it's implemented, just a quick, quick reminder, is that there is this type called task handler that defines a three different methods and those methods are mapped to a specific handlers with a specific HTTP methods as well. So post is using create, get is using task and put is using update. Uh, pretty straightforward. There is a, there are risk, depending on the method type, HTTP method type, there are requests and responses. So what is going to happen in the test is that we're going to be using those exported requests and responses as well as we're going to be hitting the HTTP server directly. We're not going to be testing these methods directly, but rather through the HTTP server. Let me show you. One thing to I want to call out before we start is that if you haven't seen another video that I recorded for uh, Counterfeiter, it's a tool for creating spies, tests, and mocks that generates type safe Go. So if you haven't seen that yet, I will again leave the link in the description as well. We are using this one to generate a fake type that is going to be used as the one for uh, an input when creating a new task handler. And all of that will make sense if just in a moment. I will show you why we need that. Before jumping into that specifically, I want to show you the structure that I have, I like using, which is, is defining a subtests, the subtests right here using, you know, table test based uh, tests and that in the end represent all the subcases that we're trying to test. Below that is your usual, you know, uh, for with the uh, with the instructions that we need for actually testing or, or running the tests. Now, the way the actual structure is implemented is that I like defining a setup, and this is, this is what I was mentioning about counterfeiter and the type that we're receiving in the task handler, which is right here. And that one is the one that is actually doing the operation that is connecting or talking to the to the data store is the application service in our hexagonal architecture and that is the one doing the logic behind the scenes for any operation that we need to do specific to data store or of the data stores or maybe validations those kind of things we are specifically focusing right here in the http layer only we're specifically focusing on receiving the payload that is coming from the client and preparing and doing something with that sending da that downstream to the application service, waiting for the application service to return, to give us some results, and then converting that back to a JSON response that then our client will be able to understand. So that's why this is a structure the way it is. That's why we have a setup that actually allows us to, if you look at the right side of your screen, you will see that there is this setup here that allow us allows the test to maybe return a specific values that then we can actually test as the output. Like for example, right here, we are creating, hypothetically calling the service type, we are calling it create, which if you, again, if you go back to the create function um, in the task handler type, you will notice that the structure is we're calling create the create method. And that one is just is depending on the results, is creating either returning a JSON response that indicates an error or, or returning a JSON response that indicates that the record was created. So that's why here we are actually calling the create returns to return a fake value that then we can test down below here. And again, if we look at the actual implementation of the subtest, 
or how we're calling that subtest rather, you will notice that we're making a request or doing a request with the configuration that we want to pass into the server, which in this case is the input that indicates the JSON payload that is right here. And then after that, we're receiving the output and we are trying to compare the two values to make sure that, let me jump into the actual function right here. So we are comparing the two values, one of them, the one that is coming from the JSON, uh, the one that is coming from the server or the handler, and we're comparing that back to the expectation that we are trying, with, that we have right here. So that's wh why the output field has a uh, type, or rather a field that indicates the response. We're comparing those using the CMP uh, type, uh, package, that again, if you haven't seen that video either, I will have the link in the description as well. It's a package for comparing uh, two different uh, stroke types, or rather any, or in practice, any type that you want to compare. So this is sort of the structure that I like to use when working with, with HTTP handlers. There is your usual subtest section, uh, and then each subtest happens to have a setup if it needed, which is most of the cases is needed for all the HTTP APIs. There is some sort of input that represents the payload. I'm using a slice of bytes because I want to also test the case where the uh, JSON payload is malformed, which is right here. Let me highlight it for you which is, if you notice, is missing a curly braces right here and the quote. So I'm trying to test this case right here, this line, this validation. I'm trying to make sure that the value that we're receiving from the client is correct, the JSON payload, and we're testing that as well. And obviously the last case will be testing when our service is failing for whatever reason and we are testing that as well. If you we run all the tests, you will notice that all of them are green, and that is because uh, everything obviously is covered. But I want to show you the other two methods, which is put and get, which follow the same pattern. There is a declaration of the subtests right here, and then again, it's testing the two different ways to return values back to the user, which in this case for get is using uh, 200 and 500, which is when it worked and when it didn't work, which is right here, this is, will be the uh, 500, and right here will be the uh, 200. Now for put, if we scroll down a little bit more, you will notice that again, it's sort of like the combination of the get and the post, but now it's testing, obviously, that the payload is correct. Correct. It's testing that the values according to the service are coming back correct. And it's also testing that the value, well, it's not testing that the, well, it's testing that the value uh, work in, in all. So that's why we have a 200, 400, and 500, which are the different uh, paths that the request can take, or the handler can take when receiving events, when receiving messages from the client through the HTTP handler. So that's basically how I like a structure. It's pretty straightforward. Using the standard library, I think it gives you more or enough for testing HTTP handlers. I know I mentioned you the API test package, that's another way to do it. But if you if you don't want to import or depend on a third party uh, package, you can just use the standard library as well. And I think the important bit about this is not actually showing you how to test it, the, the, how to test or write the tests, but rather how, because we are defining the way we are defining our code and our dependencies, we can easily test everything independently of each other. There is no need to run, for example, here, a uh, PostgreSQL database behind the scenes because obviously the type that we're receiving is a, is an interface type and that type behind the scenes can represent whatever they have to represent with the intention that obviously it makes sense in the context of testing, but as well as in the context of there is no dependency between different layers until the binary is compiled, which is why dependency injection is so great when building microservices and specifically in, in this case of the hexagonal architecture, how everything, all the layers communicate with each other. So with all of that being said, thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time. And as usual, keep it up and don't give up. Talk to you next time. Goodbye.